Local election coverage is brought to you in part by the Greater Des Moines Board of Realtors and by the Zenith Dealers of Iowa. How to control the legislature. We already have a winner for one state office and Iowans in Washington. I'm T.J. Beer. We'll be back with details on these stories in a moment. Buying a home is a big investment. For most people, it's the biggest they'll ever make. When you're ready to take the step to a new home or sell your present one, get professional help from a member of the Greater Des Moines Board of Realtors. Your realtor can help you find that dream home or sell your present one fast and at the right price. When you make your big investment, see a professional. Zenith Audio. Powerful receivers with precise, clean sound. Allegro speakers that give you remarkably accurate response. Precision belt-driven turntables. And all the performance features you want. Zenith is sounding good. Audio, the flip side of Zenith. At Stog Deals, you'll find a wide selection of Zenith components and compacts, too. Register for the Zenith sweepstakes. Free Zenith stereo and rock on the road tour jacket in Nevada at Henderson TV. More than half of the Iowa legislature is up for election. All of the House and about half of the Senate seats will be decided by the voters. It was two years ago in 1978 that the Republicans took control of the legislature from the Democrats. The Democrats have controlled the House for the sessions beginning in 1965, 1974, and 1976. George Mills, who is our State House reporter, is with me. George, um, the business of controlling the legislature has more than just passing political interests. What does it mean to a citizen this year? Well, it, uh, one particular thing it means is that the legislature will reapportion the state in two ways, for Congress and for Senate and House seats in the legislature. And that's very important because the districts will change. Mm -hmm. it, it change according to the population changes as reflected in the 1980 census. And then, of course, at all times, the legislature is a very vital matter of, of uh, what shall I say, uh, issue. No, not that, but a factor in uh, everybody's life because mm -hmm. your taxes. Indeed. Uh, road taxes. What, what are we going to do about our highways? What are we going to do about our bridges? It's, uh, and it looks like it can be controlled by the Republicans. Uh, is there any possibility, you think, that the Democrats might uh, take over some seats this time? Well, after all, the polls are still open. <laughs> so I don't know, but uh, the Democrats pretty much have conceded that they can't do too well in uh, capturing control of the Senate. But mm -hmm. uh, they figure they might have just a little bit of a chance to get one or two majority in the House. Okay, but the national but... trend doesn't seem to be in their direction. Okay. George, uh, for the first time in history, there's a party that didn't put up a challenge to a state position, and that challenge was to the auditor's position. We know that there is a winner in that. Christy Callahan talked with the incumbent auditor, Dick Johnson, who is already declared a winner. It's a unique experience on, on my part. Uh, this is my first run for statewide office. Um, you can't get into statewide office any more easily than I did by being appointed, and I appreciate the, the governor's... Um, uh, concern and his willingness to uh, appoint me. What plans do you, uh, are you proposing to bring into the office for the next coming years? Well, we have a whole series of goals that we've set out in our budget for the next two years. Uh, we're looking at continually upgrading the office to uh, do a better job of looking how taxpayers' funds are being spent. One of the key goals of our office in this next year is to um, help in the implementation of the Governor's Economy Committee recommendations by monitoring the implementation. And in each audit that we're doing this year, we're going to include in, as a section of our audit, uh, a summary of what has been done in the implementation of those recommendations. George, there is some speculation on why the Democrats did not put up somebody to oppose Dick Johnson. Have you any theory on that? Well, it's only a guess, but uh, Dick is a CPA. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised with what uh, the Democrats were unable to uh, recruit a CPA to run against him. And mm -hmm. it may be that some Democrats uh, of importance decided that uh, to let him alone because he is a real pro in that job. Of course, Iowans have had some real pros that have gone on to Washington. Some people have said maybe they haven't succeeded as well as Iowans might have liked them to do so. Those people that have gone on to national offices. Now then, if 
NBC's projections are correct, um, WHO may have an alumnus <laughs> in That's the White for House. That's sure. Uh, Ronald Reagan is an alumnus of this station. He uh, was a sportscaster here from 1933 to 37, and tens of thousands of Iowans probably still know him because uh, he uh, broadcasts Chicago Cub ball games out of here. But he is the third person uh, in Iowa history to attain that level of national office. We had uh, Herbert Hoover, born in Iowa at West Branch, uh, lived here till he was in Iowa till he was 10 years old, and he was uh, president from 1929 to 1933. Mm -hmm. Then Henry Wallace, uh, uh, resident of Des Moines, was the uh, vice president under Roosevelt in Roosevelt's third term from 1941 to 45. Very briefly, George, on the ballot is the question of the constitutional convention. In, in basically 10 words or less, uh, what do you anticipate may happen in that? If the mood of the country is reflected in Iowa, watch out. Okay. It might pass. Thank you, George. Uh, the results of voting on the Constitutional Convention question will come in rather slowly. That's because ballot issues are counted after the candidates. But we will have the results of how Iowans feel on the issue later in this evening. I'm T.J. Beer. Stay tuned for more local and national Decision 80 coverage. local election coverage is also brought to you by the new Dick Hazelbaker Chevrolet in 300 East Locust and by Walt Johnson's Collector's Extravaganza.